Uh, okay, so good morning everyone. My name is Susan Humphreys. I am the owner and founder of a company called MarketEdge.ie. Um, basically, I'm a digital marketing consultant, uh, but my company and I, we work primarily with uh, IT companies, managed security providers, managed service providers. So it's, uh, I've been in business for the last three plus years. Prior to that, I worked mainly within the cyber security space. So it's all, this is very much focused around B2B uh, marketing strategy. Um, so over the next half an hour, 40 minutes or so, if anyone has any questions at any stage, feel free, of course, to jump in and ask. But um, so essentially what we're going to look at is how do we build a successful marketing strategy? This is based on, uh, I, said, I suppose, my, my experience working with uh, companies over the last few years. Um, but what I want to talk to you about essentially is actually, I've gone through a new shot, is kind of the, the current marketing landscape. Right? Seven guys were having a little bit of a chat a few minutes ago uh, just on what we're talking about. But um, like when I started in marketing, whatever it was, 15 years ago, the perception of marketing was very different to what it is now. We were seen as the coloring department, um, kind of a nice to have, and others would call it a fluffy degree, um, which is quite insulting. <laughs> but when you think about marketing 15 years ago, compared to what we have now, like we didn't have as many apps, we didn't have as many resources. Uh, we certainly didn't have a seat at the, at the table, at the board table. Um, but over, uh, over the last 15 years, obviously people have been working very hard to change that, to cement that. And now we can see how we can play a role. We, you know, what is a successful marketing strategy? What does that apply to? Is it um, a successful brand awareness? Is your brand recognizable? Uh, is it really good lead generation? Is it a fantastic return on, on your investment? Essentially, it's all of those things. Um, and as I said, we look at various, or we rely on various tools and teams and resources to help uh, cement that. But I just want to bring you to actually bring your attention to a conversation I had a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was in a meeting with it, it was a prospective meeting with um, the chairman and CEO of the board of one of the largest, actually it is the largest um, private IT company in Ireland, right? Part of, part of a billion euro company. And we were talking about the, the prospect of employing marketing strategy. They don't have an in-house marketing uh, resource, which was quite interesting. But halfway through the conversation, um, the CEO turned around to me and said, look, let's just call a spade a spade. Marketing is bullshit. I thought, well, this is awkward. <laughs> uh, exactly what you want to hear. And I said, okay. I said, why? You know, what, what, essentially, what, what's happened? What, what's your perspective? And he said, well, essentially, two things have happened, right? He said, they had started originally. They did have an in-house marketing resource. Um, and he said, didn't work. I said, what didn't work? And he said, well, we tried some campaigns, but they didn't work. So again, trying to just get get down to a little bit more what exactly didn't work. And I think from what I gathered from the, the conversation was they had employed somebody who was qualified in marketing, who had a certain level of experience, but to deal with that size of company and maybe the expectation that was put on them, um, not given the resources. And let me tell you, they were all told to hit the ground running. How often have we heard that, whether in job descriptions, perspective meetings, it's like, you know, we need results yesterday. And that puts pressure on people to kind of go, oh God, I need to deliver straight away. I need to prove my worth. I need to, um, I need to get this done. And what happens essentially is we leave out steps, right? We, I suppose subconsciously, we're doing ourselves an injustice. We're doing marketing an injustice by doing these things. So that was one thing that happened. And I said, okay, fair enough. The other thing that happened was they decided, okay, we're going to outsource our marketing. And they went to two of the largest marketing agencies um, in the country and asked them for 
proposals for you know uh, to manage their marketing for them and to um, basically to, to take over that function. They got two proposals back. I sent one of them just as a, a point of reference. And I had to laugh when I, when I looked at it first. Is it was essentially, well, the one I got sent was 15 pages long. Uh, 13 pages was all about how great they were, you know, filled with customer testimonials and how great, you know, what, like, the, the successes that they've had. Another page was their price, um, 25 grand. And one page was on what they were going to do for, uh, for this company. But it didn't say what they were going to do. It didn't have anything. There was no clout within it. There was absolutely no, uh, there was just no, no basis to what they were proposing and it's, you know, charging 25 grand for it. Uh, so he, and he said the other proposal was pretty similar. They wanted 30 grand. Okay. The money isn't an issue. They were clear on that. What is an issue is what they were going to get for that. Um, I always say to people, I can't guarantee results. I won't promise that I'm going to make you 10x what you've invested or whatever that is. But I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to tell you exactly the, um, the length of time that you should expect to start seeing results. So 30 days, 90 days, whatever that is. Again, it kind of depends on, um, on the people that we're working with. So I thought this is, you know, I, I just got a little bit more insight to why he said marketing was bullshit. And I said, I, I get where you're coming from. Um, when you've, you know, so far things haven't really worked out. Uh, you're now being sent these things that are talk about how great people are, but they're not really saying what they're going to do. There's no, uh, there's no description. There's no anything. And again, whenever we're creating proposals or anything like that, we're not really giving away trade secrets, but we need to be clear on what it is that we're actually going to, to do for our people. So the, let me go back to it, right? So essentially, when you think about it then, right, what, what can we do as marketers collectively? What can we do when we're looking at this, um, you know, facing situations like this? And we've all maybe faced it in, in different ways. Uh, maybe they mightn't have been so blunt about it. But, <laughs> um, you know, we just think like, so what I, what I do, I have a system that I work with and I say, um, Whoever it is that I'm going to work with, I'm going to build on the four core fundamentals of marketing, right? And this may seem straightforward, but I can guarantee you, when people are asked to hit the ground running or start generating those results yesterday, they're leaving out parts of this equation. So in my opinion, right, the basics of a marketing strategy, your messaging, your value proposition, uh, your audience, your target market, segmentation, uh, your tactics, what exactly are you going to do? Where are you going to meet these people? And then one that I've seen, see that's forgotten about so often is the nurture side of it. So I'll go into a little bit more detail, right? Um, okay, so your messaging or your value proposition, right? In my opinion, a strong message should clearly say who you are, what you're about, how you help your customers. Put, put you there, right? Um, again, what I see in a lot of situations is that people are focusing on process rather than the outcome. They're explaining what they do. And what happens is when you start to explain what you do, people glaze over and they go, how does this even apply to me? They don't care. They just want to know if somebody has an issue that they're dealing with, um, if somebody is talking to you about marketing, then there's some reason that, that they're at that, that, at that stage. What is it that they truly, wanna, um, truly want to achieve? So if you focus on the outcomes more so than the actual process of what you're doing, then it's starting to frame yourself. It's, it's, it's evident where you sit in that, in that um in that position. So this is another side of it, right? We can have, a, obviously we can have multiple variations of a message, which will depend on the next part of the equation, which I'll tell you in a sec. 
And so, again, from my experience, what I see, people tend to scale back from having a targeted or a clear message, or sorry, not even a clear message, but a specific message, right? Because they'll say, and I think a lot of people are, you know, in, this, in a similar boat, they'll say, but if I don't say that I do marketing for every type of company, then you never know that I could be missing out on some opportunities. Um, and instead of, you know, you can, you can be clear on what it is that you do, but if you've got multiple variations of your message and you're delivering it in, in, uh, to different target audiences and different segments, different channels, then that will actually help you hone in more so on, um, on the customers that you want to attract. So again, it's something that I see quite often that they just, they do quite a, a broad spectrum message. This is what I do. And then they kind of like that. She just gave an example. I was with a client yesterday and they, I, you know, who's, who do you target? And this very a new client that I'm working with. It was our first kind of kickoff um, session. I said, who are you? Who do you want to target? Who have you had most success with? I said, oh, well, kind of everybody. You know, they have nearly one of everything. And that's, that can be quite exhausting because when you think about the amount of marketing materials you have to create for that, that's just broad spectrum. You're like, they're on every social media channel. They're on everything. They're doing like a whole pile of everything, but not getting very good results. So I said, right, okay, messaging is where we're going to start your value proposition. Um, this is specific in your target audience, right? So again, it's something that I see a lot is this spray and pray. That it's just it's one one message blasted to everybody. Again, they told me about like that their email marketing consists of one email to all three and a half thousand subscribers. And if they like as they told me, that there isn't any real common denominator between the customers that they um, that they deal with. So how can one message fit all? It doesn't. So um, I'm a huge fan of segmentation, and so I think, like, firm believer, it does take a little bit more time. It does mean that you're going to have to create a little bit more content, but it's just, it's more targeted, it's more specific, and I guarantee you, you get better results. But take time to segment your audience, really understand who they are, and how your product or service helps them. So that's going back into your, um, into your value proposition. What sets you apart? Why should you or why should your client or prospective client or audience, why should they take note um, of you as opposed to your competitor? Uh, then you create a specific message that speaks directly to them. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, and yeah, so that, like when, you're, when you're clear on who you're targeting and what your messaging is, then you can, next you can focus on your channels and your tactics, right? So how exactly you're going to say it and where are you going to put it. When I said at the beginning that marketers as a whole were, you know, were overwhelmed, there's so many channels that people can focus on, they can use, there's apps, there's, Jesus, there's so much that you can employ, but do you really have to be everywhere? Do you have the resources to be everywhere? Do you have the time to be everywhere? Probably not. Um, or maybe you do. I don't. <laughs> so, I again, I just get really like when I'm working on a strategy with uh, with my clients. It's let's start with the ones that are most obvious, the ones where we know that your audience is hanging out. There's a school of thought that people, especially since the, the pandemic, I guess, is that um, people are saying, "Oh well, everybody's everywhere now, right? Everybody's on everything." Um, which fair enough to maybe to a certain degree, but there are certain uh, platforms and, and channels that will stick out more so than others. And again, you have to think about the, the resources that you're going to put to this. Uh, where does your audience hang out? What's your focus? So this is just one that I always start with, with my clients. Again, it's B2B, it's, it's tech marketing. So that's uh, LinkedIn is a huge one for me. 
uh, email and then advertising, right? That's, if we can, like, again, people can look and go, oh, but, you know, what about Instagram? What about TikTok? What about um, do Google ads or do, you know, there's, there's so many more things that you can add into the mix and say, well, let's, let's start with this. Let's be uh, really clear on what we're doing. Who we want to talk to? Let's have our um, let's have our our list of uh, of people that we want to go after, and let's start the outreach on um, on a few of these sections and see how it goes. And if it's going really well, and we do have the capacity to scale up, then let's add in something else that um, that makes sense to the campaign. Yeah, and don't overcomplicate your strategy. <clears throat> Yeah, so focus on a few channels that work for you and your audience. You don't need to be on everything to be successful, right? That's, that's, that's my um, kind of two cents in it. And again, if you go back to how marketers are feeling that it, you may feel obliged that you have to employ the latest of everything or be on top of all the trends. And it's quite exhausting doing, doing that, um, you know, trying to beat algorithms. Hint, you'll never beat an algorithm, not long term. Um, that's, that, that's why they're there. But if you can, if you can just be confident in, uh, in your delivery, in your system, then, and it really focuses, and again, like when you're talking to people, so let's say like me talking to um, that prospective client, um, or if you talk to your boss and, if you're the expert in your marketing field, then you need to be confident, you need to educate, and you need to show why, why this will work. And if we can start seeing results, good results, start generating good quality leads or um, whatever that, that end goal actually is, then, you know, then let's test more. Let's, let's add more and, and build from there. It's easier to start small and scale with success, which is true. Because again, when you got when you start to see good results, people start to feel better, um, and that trickles through the through the team. If you're if you're like if you're running the ground and it's um, you're trying to be on everything, you're trying to do so many different things, and you're seeing some results and things, you just feel exhausted, you feel overwhelmed. You've got people breathing down your leg, looking for results, whether that's return on investment, uh, whatever it is. And so, again, if you can focus your um, focus your mind, focus your activities, then it's easier to to grow on that because it's easier to see when people feel better about what they're doing, and you can actually see the tangible results. Um, it's easier to ask for more resources or more people to get involved in it. Um, sorry. Yes, don't forget to nurture my favorite one. Okay, so obviously now you've spoken to your audience, delivered the message in the right place. We have another field to climb. Are they ready to buy? In a lot of cases, they're not. So, and what I've seen is so many of of my clients in past instances, whether they've done the marketing themselves or they've had marketing um, done for them or they have a person employed to do it or contracted, whatever it might be, is they're chasing net new all the time, which again is, um, you know, that's, that's, that's quite an exhausting thing to do. And eventually you'll run out of people to, um, uh, people to target unless you, you know, go to a new a new segment. So again, like what I've seen is that people will say that they lasted to um, they create a marketing marketing campaign. They reached out to let's say a thousand contacts. Um, Ten percent of those came through, and but what happened to the other ninety percent? And they say, oh well, we, you know, some maybe uh, will communicate with them every so often. Others have just discarded them saying, oh, well, you know, they weren't interested. I said, well, maybe they were interested or they could have been interested. But did you think about changing the message, um, talking to them, 
putting them back into a nurture sequence. So, you know, one of the easiest ways of, of managing that is, let's say, putting them back through kind of like a, um, an email marketing funnel. So changing your subject title, um, maybe changing the offer, just seeing is there any, is, is there any um, biting within that? And if there's, you know, again, you have to think of like people could be, let's say today we're at a conference. How many of you are checking your emails? You might be, but you may not pay a huge amount of attention to an offer that's coming through. So you're not sitting at your desk. It's not the, it's not the normal day. You may be on holidays. Um, so it's, it's worth, it, I suppose it's, it's worth putting them through um, the system again and actually having a system that, uh, that will nurture them. Nurturing database in your network, right? Um, there's one thing there. So, right, this is worth spending time on as well, is employing kind of automations and integrations um, to help with that sequence. Like, for example, and Risa is going to talk about it in a little while, HubSpot, it's one of my favorite CRM systems. You can do everything with it, just link up in different ways, um, create your email campaigns and, and track how people are behaving through that. There's, you know, like, there is systems and processes and tools that we can use to help us with this. It'll take out the heavy lifting so we can focus on um, on the active day-to-day -day of our marketing, but it's something that really needs to be considered and, um, and to be employed and take the time to, to do it. And again, if, if you don't have maybe the, the skill or the knowledge in-house, think about uh, there's people who, who literally just focus on this and, and um, tying up all those loose ends and making sure that everything is talking to each other. It's a really worthwhile exercise. Um, and then I would say, like in terms of content, it's again something that I see is that it's a constant promotion or a constant sell. It's just pushing your product or pushing your service. Because again, when you think about people are trying to get their results yesterday, they're trying to justify their spend on marketing um, or justify whatever that is, their spend on advertising. They want to see tangible results or return as quickly as possible. But that, when you think of the recipient, how many emails do you get on a, a daily basis that's pushing that? How many do you open? You may do for brands, let's say, if you, you, know, you see a sale that's popping up that only ever comes up once in a blue moon kind of thing, you'll jump on it straight away. But for the most part, think about the content that you actually respond to as a person. Right? Not as a marketer, not as a business owner or an employee or whatever it is. What, it, what do you actually respond to? And for the most part, I can guarantee you, it's when, when something hits that you're like, God, that's, that's actually exactly what I'm dealing with at the moment. This is what I'm doing. This is, um, it's a, a pain point, a bugbear, whatever it is. And if you can create content that genuinely is helping people rather than is, rather than trying to hook them, getting them to buy or to go, you know, we all know this type of content that is like, we give you a snippet, but then, you know, you have to click through here to find out the rest of the secret. Then you click through to there and you have to enter your details for something else or you have to do. And that just, quite frankly, it pisses people off. Um, again, as users, as, as, as people of, you know, everyday consumers, whether it's, you know, business or not, that type of, um, those types of tactics. There, yeah. We need the... Catch. Uh, so uh, based on your uh, last statement about the clicking through, I'm yeah. curious, how do you handle sick content? So the spark introduce uh, confront sort of thing, because I'm thinking if, if you are trying to spark interest, you're going to give a little snippet and then yeah. you're hoping that that really sparks an interest that the person goes further to be introduced to whatever it is here. So how do you handle that um, based on your views on the clicking through? Yeah. So... Like, and I get it, right? We do want it. That's how we measure is how somebody, if somebody clicks through. And that's going back to 
you know, the the reporting, the, the, the data and all that, which is, it's important, but it's not the defining success. You, again, you have to, uh, you have to take yourself out to a certain degree out of that, um, that, that internal mindset of, well, it, you know, I'm the marketing resource and I have to report on the successes and all that. Come back and, you know, flip the, flip the side. So many people don't actually truly think about the person who you're trying to convert. Um, so I'm a firm believer in give as much information for free in an easy way as possible. Because if you can, if you genuinely, and anyway, again, you're not going to give it all within an email per se, right? So you're not going to give the full contents of a blog post within an email. That just doesn't really make sense. But if you can start to build the reputation that you're, you're, you're giving value, you're, um, you're genuinely trying to help the reader, they'll click through, right? So they can read the full thing. So you need to be, uh, and I do it in such a way that I don't always ask for, well, especially if we have the, um, if we have the data, but, you know, if we want them to download something, that you don't have to give away your, your personal details all the time. Instead, I do it by link tracking, you know, that's a numbers game. It's not, it's not Ben has downloaded, the, you know, I sent this to Ben and Ben has downloaded in the, that, that type of granular detail. But I found that the people who are looking for these reports, they want to know if it's working, they want to know what's happening. And you will know if it's working, if you're genuinely giving um, value. I've just seen it in, in, again, going back to that mindset where people say, oh, don't like marketing or I don't like this or people are always just trying to get one off they want my details they want that what I want to do is kind of change that perception employ tactics that um that that's going to help us long term because when I you know when we talk about how much the marketing landscape has evolved over the past 15 years but then you know you still have that to deal with and it's creeping in a whole new set of doubts um because of people are so focused on trying to get that Ben has done this. Um, now, interestingly, the next two conversations or the next two slots, I think are going to go into a little bit more detail on that type of thing. Um, they can talk to that some more, but that's just how I do it. I'm a firm believer in educate, don't sell. Stop, stop the selling tactics. Stop the trying to, you know, just give you one line and then you know, to get the rest, you need to give me something. It just, quite frankly, it, it, it annoys people. Um, and I think if you can even test it to a certain degree, you know, do a, do a split test um, and see if you, if you give people the full information and you give that, how does that actually uh, come through? You know, how in terms of success versus the one where you're, capturing data um, because again you know using using link tracking using stuff like that you will capture data anyway it just depends on how much you actually truly need um, to define success does that answer your question yeah thank you um, yeah so uh, that's essentially it and I think like you know as I said nurturing is one of the most important parts of um, parts of your strategy and it's one that again just people don't necessarily always focus on so what I'd say is just think to yourself within uh, oh yeah connections and conversations equals conversions um, so again if you are going to let's say we're you know we have a networking opportunity here today you were chatting this morning we've got a networking lunch um, you may be part of networking organizations I'm a huge fan of networking um, it's you know, most of my business has uh, been generated by referrals. And um, so it's, but what I do is I use, again, back to LinkedIn, I'm such a huge fan of it. Um, I use LinkedIn as my nurture, as a huge part of my nurture uh, strategy. And that's connecting with people, talking to them, um, you know, via their DMs, see what's going on. And instead, like a lot of, a lot of my business actually comes through that. Um, by keeping up with people, 
by having your clear message, by having knowing who exactly you want to talk to um, and the right places, then that's that's going to help you an awful lot in your in your marketing. So just as a quick recap, I'm conscious of the time. Uh, so get clear on your messaging and your value add. Be clear on your target audience. Don't just hit the ground running and forget it all or forget parts. Uh, identify your channels and your tactics. Um, and actually one thing within that that I forgot to mention is what's also important within, you know, when you've identified your channels, your tactics, so what you're going to do is your sequence as well. So how often are you going to uh, talk to people, reach out to people, um, follow up with them? Like there's, I remember somebody said to me before, it's like, there's uh, pleasantly persistent, friendly follow-up. Other little things to remember. So just don't forget to do it. And that brings you into nurturing your network and maintain consistency. So that's essentially it um, in, from me. Uh, I realize we have 10 minutes left. If anyone does have any conversations, I'll be more than happy to answer them here or as I'm around for the day. Would be delighted to talk to any of you. Uh, and I see that the square has been passed around. Is there any? No. So yeah, thank you. Oh, and so the marketing is bullshit conversation. Uh, I can be tired to say that I actually got that contract. Uh, so, <laughs> so I didn't bullshit them. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's my uh, good news story. So unless there's anything that I pass it on to Tom? Yeah. Yeah. Susan, thanks so much. Thank you.